Because in Canaanite religion, back in Babylonianism, Hallel and Ishtar, remember the goddess of sex and fertility, they tried to pull off a heavenly coup that failed according to Canaanite mythology. In other words, Isaiah the prophet, 8th century prophet, is speaking of things that generation and that time knew quite well. Why is it Canaanite religion now? Well, let's think for a moment. As you read your Old Testament, especially about the history of Israel, we always read about the god Baal, right? And Ashtoreth. That happens to be the same as Ishtar. What we have is the children of Israel were being affected by the Babylonian religion that moved into the land of Israel. In fact, they were there when Abraham came. You say, how do you know that? Genesis 12 says in a very simple line, and the Canaanite was already in the land. The Canaanite religion was one of the most corrupt the world has ever seen. I will not discuss with a mixed audience what they did. But immoral, idolatrous, terrible. And they were the Babylonian religion. They are now in Israel. And in mythology, in the Canaanite religion, Hillel and Ishtar try to pull off this heavenly coup. It doesn't work. And they failed. And they fell. Now, uh, I want you to look very carefully at your Bible to verse 13 when it says, I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Well, let's use Hebrew again. Say, what does it actually say? A Jewish Bible will tell you. It will say, on the summit of Zaphon. Is everybody listening? Some of you are saying, honey, I knew we shouldn't come. I haven't got the foggiest idea what that man's talking about. <laughs> Zaphon. Z, spell it out. Make a note of it. Z-A-P-H-O-N. This is not the only time it appears. For instance, in Psalm 48, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion in the... Hebrews says on the summit of Zaphon. Well, don't blame the King James boys for coming up the sides of the north. They had no idea what it was. What is Zaphon? The New International tries to help us here and says on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. What are we talking about here? The New Revised tries to help us and says, on the heights of Zaphon. I'll tell you what the issue is. Mount Zaphon is in northern Philistia and was considered to be the, the seat of the Canaanite gods and the Babylonian religion that had left after 539 when Babylon fell and they migrated into Israel and into what today would be Lebanon. And the Mount Zaphon was considered to be the place where all the gods of the Babylonian religion were. And so he says, Lucifer, I will sit upon that mount on Mount Zaphon, meaning I'm in charge of all the Babylonian religion. Well, I'll, I'll make it more simple than this. Satan is the problem. Hello? Anybody agree? And the reason for his fall? Pride. The reason for our fall? You can mention a dozen things, but the real reason is? Pride. Now, before I move on, let me tell you what happened to the Babylonian religion. They eventually moved up into Turkey. And they settled at the city of Pergamos. Do you remember in Revelation 2 about Pergamos? It, calls, it says where Satan's throne is. I've been there many times. I will be there in two weeks. And I will once again stand at Pergamos. Pergamos, the American Medical Association says, is the beginning of modern day medicine. Uh, the very insignia of a snake wrapped around what looks like a cross of the American Medical Association 
is the insignia of the Chaldeans of the Babylonian religion in the city of Pergamos. In Pergamos, there's a high mountain because cities in the ancient world were often built at the foot of a high mountain. The temples and the paganism and religious systems were on top of the mountains. And usually on those mountains, so it is at Pergamos, there is a great amphitheater. There's one there. holds 12,000 people. On the other side of the mountain, uh, the mountain uh, has a little ledge that comes out. And here is a gigantic ancient altar, which the Bible says was the seat of Satan's throne. By the way, the first school of psychology came from Pergamos. If you want to know where psychology came from, how about talk therapy? Let me just tell you, uh, no one was ever healed of talk therapy, ever. They speak about catharsis. Just lay down the couch, ma'am, and tell, just let it all out. Get it off your chest. I know they use the word catharsis, but that's a Greek word in the New Testament for the cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ. You want to get your problem solved? And go to the blood of Jesus Christ and get your sins washed away. All of this came from ancient Pergamum. They had a long tunnel, which I'll be taking people through in just a couple weeks. And at the top, there are openings. Uh, the first one, uh, somebody's at the top while you're walking through this dark tunnel telling you, Oh, I know you are miserable. You are ready to go out of your mind. It's so terrible. Just keep going. You go to the next one, he says, Now, it may be terrible, but it's not so bad. There are ways to get... By the time you get out of the tunnel, he has talked you out of your problem. That's the beginning of psychology. It was at Pergama. But what was at Pergama was the Babylonian religion. Now, hang on. They didn't stay there. They had to move. Especially they moved when the great earthquake hit in Asia Minor, one that destroyed many of the churches that are mentioned in the book of Revelation. Where did they go next? Well, you'll find this interesting. They went all the way to Italy. And they were the Etruscans who invaded into Rome. You want to find something else interesting? The high priest of the Babylonian religion was a name you all know. Julius Caesar. He's the one that gave Octavian the name Pontifex Maximus, supreme ruler. And it was Octavian who became the Augustus Caesar who is in your Bible. The one who started the Pax Romana, the Roman peace, and the first ruler of the empire, who believed that he was the high priest of the religion that dominated the whole world. So you could be polytheistic and pagan and worship any god you want as long as you gave allegiance to Pontifex Maximus, the first 16 emperors, 14 of them were homosexuals. When Rome fell, by being sacked by the Visigoths in 476 A.D., when it was destroyed, the Church of Rome took over. Well documented in history, even in Catholic history. The new ruler, who was Bishop of Rome, took the title that the emperor had, Pontifex Maximus, Supreme Pontiff, and now we have the popes. And who was that man? 476 A.D. His name was Damasus. Who was he? He came from Haifa, Israel, where there was a huge temple and a Babylonian religion set up in Haifa, Israel. He was a Babylonian religionist. He was a Chaldean, a priest of the Babylonian system. And he becomes the pastor of the church in Rome and becomes the first pope. Everybody okay? All of this is documented. Not just by me and my writings, but by world history. Everybody knows it. But everybody wants to put it down, act like it's no big deal. No, no, no. In the Bible, it's a very big deal. In other words, a lot of us, because we don't know our history, or we're listening to political people today rewrite it for political correctness, you know, that we don't want to offend anybody, they are removing the facts of ancient history from us completely. They're taking them out of our textbooks, especially in North America, that the globalists call the real threat to globalism. 